Christine, and today we're going to be talking about my favorite series of all time! Top 10! My top 10 favorite series of all time. I know what you're thinking right now. Christine, we know your top 10 favorite series of all time. Oh, oh, do you? Do you? Then what in the hell do I get requests for this video all the gosh darn time? Seriously, the video requests I get just baffle me sometimes because I talk about my favorite series so much that I'm going to turn this into a game. I'm going to count down from 10 to 1. So you can place your bets right now if you've been here for a while. I know some of you are like, oh, I just got here. I don't know your favorite series. I'm here. I'm going to tell you now. But for those of you who know, let's, let's just see how predictable I am today. Now, I'm going to start with two honorable mentions too. So if you want to place those bets, you can place them now. Series like three books or more. If it's three books and it hasn't finished yet and I really like it, I'm not going to consider it my favorite series of all time. If it's more than three books and I'm already three books in and I love all those three books, I'm going to consider it like I've read it. You know? You know what I'm saying? This is my top 10 favorite series of all time. <laughs> Guys, you got your bets placed? You got them? You got them placed? So should we just like play bingo with this? I don't know. I bet. So let's do bets. At the end, if you have 12 points, you win everything. I'll be really, really impressed if you have 12 points. In the comments at the end, let me know how many points you have and I'm just gonna high five you in the comments and be really impressed. For a little more preamble. Your favorite series really has to do with the book, obviously. Like, the book has to be fantastic. Books. It's a series. Oh my god, that actually hurt. I just slapped myself and I don't know why. Your favorite book series really has to do with Obviously the content, I already said that. Then, when you read it in your life, like how old you were, and how much you were able to immerse yourself in it. If you can't give yourself entirely to a book, you're not gonna enjoy it to the extent that you could. And that happens to me a lot nowadays in my adulting life, and I hate it. I wanna be able to just sit and read, but like stupid responsibilities. And I know what you're saying, like just don't do the responsibilities, but they're just there. When you start adulting, they start to take over your brain, and you can't immerse yourself in something unless you feel like you're on vacation. And it's rare that we feel like that. A stupid adults, stupid, stupid crushing responsibilities. Let's take that in mind, okay? Okay. Let's do this! I need some water first. I'm gonna get some water. Okay, I got my list right here. You can't see it. Don't look at it. cheating. Do, 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 do. Honorable mention number one. So I'm going from the bottom to the top. Now we're here at the bottom because I'm starting there. This series I haven't actually finished yet, but I think the first two books are incredible and they have to be honorable mention. I'm gonna apologize in advance for my shitty nail polish. Off topic. So, honorable mention number one. We have the Mistborn trilogy by Brandon Sanderson. Yeah, so the Mistborn trilogy. I have to read the last book. But the first two books are phenomenal, phenomenal. If you haven't read Mistborn yet, you really, really should. Got book talks for the first two if you're interested. And I really want to read the third one. I just haven't gotten to it yet. It was adulting and, and it's hard, it's hard. Now the reason this isn't further up on my list is, you know, one, because I haven't finished it yet, but two, because when I read these books I was in the annoying busy phases of life and I didn't get to completely completely immerse myself in the second one so the book experience wasn't as intense I couldn't give myself to it you know, it's just like a relationship you're dating someone and you're not giving yourself to them how can they get to know you how can it be that experience you want it to be fully I'm taking this too far honorable mention number one the Mistborn series da -da 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 -da. now 11 11 <laughs> series that I feel like was really important in my booktube life and I also really really enjoyed it I think it's fantastic writing has fantastic characters let's bring it on in uh, uh, the darkest mind trilogy by Alexandra Bracken I really really love the darkest minds I really really love never fade in the afterlight I did not love as much it's really hard to wrap up a trilogy in my book reading life I've come to accept this you can't expect a trilogy to wrap up beautifully unless it's a Cassandra Clare trilogy because she is the queen of wrapping up novels <laughs> Sorry. But Alex had this trilogy. She set up this huge world. There's a plague that affects everyone under 13. A lot of kids die. The ones that survive end up having these abilities. The adults put them into concentration camps and take them away from their parents. The world descends into chaos. Things are a mess. I highly recommend it. I got book stock for all three of them books. So if you read them, we can read it together. They're really, really great. <laughs> It's time for the top 10 to start now. Number 10, the 
Vampire Academy by Rochelle Maid. Who saw that one coming? You do, do you see it? Ah, uh, I don't know how many videos I've talked about Vampire Academy and I would say maybe 50. That's a lot of videos. And the covers suck and the title sucks, but the books are so thrilling and the characters are great. If you haven't read it yet, you are in for a treat. And these books really helped me through kind of tough time in college when I was feeling really alone. And I found so much happiness in these books. And since then, I've recommended them to so many people in my real life and internet life. No one's been disappointed. Everyone has come back being happy they read it. <laughs> Number nine. Oh shit, when when did this happen? Smeared lipstick up my face. Anyone make any bets about lipstick on my face? Points for you. Coming in at number nine, we have the 74th Hunger Game by Suzanne Collins. Yes, of course the Hunger Games are here. Of course they are because, wow, my first dystopian series. The first dystopian series I ever read and I really, really, really loved it. And it was amazing. The movies are amazing. Catching Fire is my favorite in the series. A lot of people didn't like Mockingjay, but when I read it, I was like, oh my God. Mockingjay part two is about to come out at this time while I'm filming this. It's very, very, very exciting. This book series will always be in my top series. It will always be there and I recommend you read it if you have it read if you're watching this years from now in the future and you're like what's the hunger games go get it moving on moving on to number eight, 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 eight. could you tell that i was jump roping there i miss jump roping i used to do it in school when they used to go like this and sing the songs why don't adults play jump rope why isn't that a thing we do i want to buy a jump rope so that i can play it with my friends coming in at number eight 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 the heroes of olympus by rick riordan oh this would be higher on my list, except the last book brought it down. Huh. I don't know why I sang that song. I just felt the need because I'm still a little bitter about the last book. I still am, but it's okay. It's okay because this series is phenomenal. This series is a spin-off of the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series. So you do, you had to read that one first. But right now we're talking about Heroes of Olympus. Rick Riordan's writing is writing that you can enjoy at any age. It's like a Pixar movie in book form, except older kids, they're 16 in here. I don't know how to describe his writing. I'm reading Magnus Chase right now, which is his new book. And I just love it so much. It's exactly what I want to read right now. And I'm so happy I picked it up. The first book is not my favorite because less Percy. But the second book is phenomenal. The third book and the fourth book are my favorites. The fifth book is Blood of Olympus. It was fun, but it wasn't a sequel. It wasn't the end. That doesn't mean you shouldn't read the series. It's amazing man in the minute. It's so good. It's so good. So there's gonna be another series in his world called The Trials of Apollo. And maybe that'll dull some of the anger from the last year's Olympus book because I thought that was gonna be our last Percy book. We'll see. Next on my list. Now it's like picking my favorite children. <laughs> Coming in at number seven, seven. At number seven, I have a series that isn't finished. There's one more book left. And this book, is our December book of the month. I'm so excited about it. The Luna Chronicles by Marissa Meyer. Winter is our book solution December book of the month. Jesse Cat and I are gonna be reading and having a live show about it at the end of December. Winter is the fourth book in the Lunar Chronicles series. I have book talks for all the other books. It's a fairy tale retelling series. It's like in the future and people live on the moon and there are cyborgs. Cyborgs are like people with robotic parts and people who live on the moon have evolved so they're kind of a different species than us now. It's so cool. Cool. And the first book is great, and the second book is great, and the third book is phenomenal. It's so good. It's so good. Coming in at number six. 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 Uh, uh, the Twilight Series by Stephen Meyer. Twilight had to be on this list. When you place your bets, you might have put it closer to the top, and I had it really close to the top at first. And maybe it is too low on my list right now. You know, I don't know. I can't sit here and ponder this for hours. I sat there for half an hour trying to figure this out. And this is where I ended up with Twilight. I read Twilight at the right time, at the right age. It's a gateway drug to reading. If you have friends that don't like reading, and they don't understand why reading is fun, you just throw Twilight at them. Twilight saves reading lives. It does. Raise your hand if Twilight saved your reading life. Raise your hand if you've ever been personally victimized for liking Twilight. Is that cool? Is it? No, it's not. Those people make me so mad. We're at number five. We're at number five. What do you think it is? What do you think it is, guys? The Throne of Glass series by Sarah J. Matt. Damn, if you haven't read this yet. If you haven't read this, you gotta get, 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 you gotta get reading. You gotta get reading. It's gonna be six books. It's a fantasy series. It's amazing. It's my new Harry Potter. Like, I look forward to it every year. Like, I looked forward to Harry Potter. It's big, and it's full of fantasy, and it's so well written, and I love the characters so much, and they just get better and better as you go along. So, you're looking at me, and you're reading Throne of Glass, and you're like, huh, okay, this is good, but it's not, like, amazing, like Christine's saying. Like, okay, 
it. She's overreacting. No, I am not. I am not overreacting, okay? They get better with each book, and they don't get phenomenal until Air of Fire. And then Queen of Shadows, man. And it's so good. It's just amazing. It's so good. I, I'm only four books in, but this I, is definitely going to be on my favorite series of all time list. It's already on it. That, hence the video. <laughs> Coming in at number four. Four. Percy Jackson and the Olympian series by Rick Riordan. I was so late to this train, and it was an amazing train. They're middle grade books, but I honestly believe anyone can enjoy them if you're open minded. If you're not like this, it's a little kid, and I can't relate to him because. Bitch, please! We're getting down to it! Like, I'm pretty sure you know what the last three are. I'm pretty sure you got these in the bag. <laughs> So number three, 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 the Mortal Instruments series by Cassandra Clare. I love this series. I love Cassandra Clare's book so hard. The Shadowhunter Chronicles. I love that world. I love those characters. I love her writing style. I love everything. I know a lot of people try to read City of Bones and you have a hard time with it and you can't get into it. <laughs> it's worth it to keep reading till City of Glass and then like you'll want to keep reading forever. What order am I supposed to read? The Mortal Instruments slash the Infernal Devices in the order they were published. City of Bones, you got City of Ashes, you got City of Glass, and you got Clockwork Angel, and you got City of Fallen Angels, and you got Clockwork Prince, and then you got City of Lost Souls, and you got Clockwork Princess, and then the last book, City of Heavenly Fire, in the Mortal Instruments series. She's got two series, one from the past and one from 2008, and they intertwine as they go along. If you don't complete the Infernal Devices before you complete the Mortal Instruments, you're gonna be spoiled for the Infernal Devices. Like, it's such an amazing world to play in and theorize in. Which brings me to number two on my list. This number two is the Infernal Devices. I love this suit. I love this trilogy. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love how Cassandra Clare weaved her two trilogies together. It was just like this mysterious weaving where you drop hints about one series and the other series and you try to use them to figure each other out. I've never read something like that. I've never read something like that. That's something very unique to Cassandra Clare's book. How she takes two different time periods in the same world and you get so curious about how the worlds weave together and the ancestry. I love it. The Infernal Device takes place in 1878 and it's in London. It's so good. And a lot of people who just read The Mortal Instruments, they get to City of Glass and they're like, I don't want to go to the Infernal Devices. Like, I like these characters. But it is so good. Just read the next book. Get over it. You will enjoy it so much more if you just stop at City of Glass and read Clockwork Angel, okay? And if you can't get into City of Bones, like, try Clockwork Angel and read those books. They're fantabulous. Fantabulous. She's so good at plot. She's so good at wrapping things up. I'm always nervous about how a series is going to wrap up because it's a really tough thing to do. And I'm never nervous about Cassie's series. <laughs> Finally, dun 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 Am I in the middle here? Yeah. Dun 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 <gasps> Number one! I, you've gotta know what number one is. Like, everyone's gotta know what number one is. And it's Harry Potter! The Harry Potter series by J.K. Rowling. There are no words to explain my extensive feelings for Harry Potter. I grew up with Harry. I read him when I was 11 and 12 and 13 and 4, all the way up to 17. I was Harry's age as I read the book. I will never experience something like that again. That section of years contains so many pivotal life moments and what you read has such a huge effect on it. And Harry Potter is that series for me and that series for a whole generation. And not only did I have the books, I had the movies and the excitement of the midnight releases. Joe is writing a sequel in play form. Like, I, I debated doing a whole video about this. The Cursed Child is gonna be a play, part one and part two is a play in London. It's gonna be a play in London next year, and it's Harry and his kid, where Deathly Hallows leaves off, but Harry's like 30 something. I remember months and months ago, when Joe wrote this anagram. Everyone was like, no, it's just an anagram to something from Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. But no, it said more Potter. More Potter! And Joe is sneaky and crafty, and if she wrote more Potter in that anagram, that means there is more Potter coming. And there is. Knows, my friends, are my top 10 series of all time. All time. And of course they're subject to switch around in the spots and the slots. But right now, that is it. <laughs> For people who've been here for a while, I'm really curious as to uh, how you did with your bets. Let me know. I'm Christine. Thank you guys so much for watching. All my links to my Twitter, my Instagram, which is Alexine by the way. But all the links are in the description. I make videos every Tuesday. I'll see you guys next time. Bye! Actually, it's a dual.
duologies, so it couldn't make it into my top 10 series. There are no duologies in my series top 10 here. These duologies aren't series, they're duologies. That's why they're called duologies. God, get your names right. Him and Hannah. There are other books I love, so I do favor books of all time videos every year. I have one for 2012. 2012. What year is that? That's a scary year. It's only three books. The books are like this book. This book. 